Jim Cannon and Rick and, and all the things they've done to, to really help put him on the map, you know, and now he, of course, carries his own uh, weight. And how many mares will he breed this year? He bred 110 in, uh, in uh, 2006. The thing about him is he's just very efficient, you know. He, he uh, don't walk so close behind him there, friend. He'll, <laughs> he'll take a shot at you. Yeah. Um, he bred 110 this year, but he's very efficient. He walks in one cover, and uh, they get him full, you know, so you're not sitting there breathing. He doesn't waste up. No. no. Jump. And, you know, we bred 110 in less than 200 covers and got 90% in full, so. And, you know, he's, he's uh, certainly had his daughters are, are coming along and, and assuring his legacy as a, a sire of sires and a great broodmare sire as well. What about his... Uh, personality. You know, he's he's a very energetic horse. He's, he's in my experience with him, he's never been you know mean to me, you know, or tried to hurt me. He just can can be a real handful sometimes, especially like these days now. Uh, when you hear you hear some talk about the, the difficulty some people have training storm cats just you know because they haven't they haven't had. I can see it. You know, I can see it. He is he. Can be a handful going back and forth to the pad and, and doing some things with, but it's never been, you know, a mean move. It's just like, man, I feel good, right? And full of it. Show you, you know, he just scared me to death a couple times, feeling too good, um, and made my hair gray. But um, do it, you know. And, and, uh, once they know that you can pretty much handle yourself, you know, you're okay with it. Uh, a little walk wherever you want to go, somewhere that these guys can get a little look at those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah, Woodside Ranch. Yeah, that's where he's going to go. He's starting to get a little fluid in those knees. Yeah, now. well, no, well, that's. But uh, it doesn't bother him. I mean, he's sound on it. Still Actually, his mother's still kicking around here now. She's, God, she's 32 now. Uh, uh, lingua is still out, and she's still a hand Is she? Oh, yeah. We've got her buddy that we use uh, as a, a mare prior to the season to blow the horses out with, and when we go get her buddy, horse body wise. Mm -hmm. Is she still getting turned out a lot now? Uh, not so much now. We're going out right now at 7 in the morning. They come up at 2.30 in the afternoon, so the fellas have time to look after them and groom them. Now, during the, off, during the breeding season, well, actually from end of March till the first part of December, I would venture to say we're as, out as much or more than anyone with our stallions. Um, you, you actually go get them in the field to breed? Out yeah, the they breed out of the paddock. Yeah. He, with him in particular, you know, if you've got mares going over in the breeding shed, he just can't handle being in the stall. There, there will be times, you know, during the spring when we get those nasty thunderstorms when you have to have him in while we're breeding. Right. And when we have to do that, we'll breed him first. We'll sure. shut the doors on the barn, turn the radio up, you know, make sure he hear is, what's going on. So he doesn't know. Well, we think he doesn't know what's going on, but he <laughs> he's, he knows. Um, but now we, you know, we're pretty natural around here. During the when they're going out at nights, they'll come in after we breed in the morning. The boys will take care of them, and uh, we breed in the afternoon at two. They'll go out at one and come up the next morning after we finish breeding. So most of the year, they're out 19, 20 hours a day, depending on the weather. We have a weather system here. I'm tied into the National Weather Service. I've got live radar. You'll know when something's coming. Yeah, we're way ahead of the storms, which... Do you have a Doppler? Yeah, on the farm? We're, we're, well, we're, we're hooked into a system called...